Welcome to Mars Saga, your gateway to the Red Planet. Subscribe now and join the journey. Welcome back to Mars Saga, where humanity's story continues under a red sky. In the last episode, we witnessed the first human footsteps on Mars, a moment that turned science fiction into living history. Now, the world holds its breath as the story deepens, because this time, humans aren't just visiting, they're staying. It begins with Colony Alpha, a cluster of silver domes glinting in the Martian dawn. Built near the edge of Jezero Crater, it stands as a monument to human courage and engineering. Each dome is a world within a world, pressure sealed, radiation shielded, and alive with the hum of machines that make survival possible. Inside, corridors glow with soft white light. Air recyclers whisper quietly in the background, filtering oxygen made from the planet itself. Water drips rhythmically through purification tubes, recycled from breath, sweat, and even waste. Nothing is lost here. Everything is reused, reborn. This is life on Mars. Outside, the wind sweeps across the plains, carrying ancient dust that has not known rain in billions of years. The horizon burns orange under a pale sun, smaller and dimmer than the one we knew on Earth. Yet inside these domes, humanity thrives, learning to live in harmony with an alien world. The first colonists, just 24 men and women, wake every morning to simulated sunrise. Their days are carefully divided between research, repair, and survival. They eat crops grown in hydroponic gardens, lettuce, beans, potatoes, nourished by recycled water and nutrient-rich algae. Every meal is a triumph, every breath a victory. But beyond survival lies purpose. These pioneers are not just here to live, they are here to build a new world. The first challenge was power. Solar panels stretch across the plains, feeding the colony's battery grid, but dust storms, unpredictable and fierce, can block sunlight for weeks. To solve this, engineers deployed many nuclear reactors deep beneath the surface, buried for protection and stability. They hum softly, providing energy day and night, ensuring lights never flicker and life support never fails. Next came communication. With Earth 225 million kilometers away, messages take up to 22 minutes each way. Every conversation with home feels like talking through time. For emergencies, colonists rely on pre-programmed AI assistance capable of decision-making, digital minds that can diagnose, repair, and even comfort. One such AI assistant, called EVA, has become the silent guardian of the colony. EVA doesn't sleep, doesn't eat, doesn't err. She keeps track of air pressure, temperature, and heartbeats. If something goes wrong, she acts before humans even know it. Life beneath the domes is not easy. Mars tests every weakness, every emotion. The colonists must battle homesickness, loneliness, and the eerie silence of a world without sound. There are no birds, no rustling leaves, no rain, only the low hum of machines and the whisper of their own breathing. Some say nights on Mars feel endless, the stars sharper, the darkness heavier. But for these pioneers, that silence is also sacred. It's the sound of progress. Every evening, as the sun dips behind the horizon, they gather in the observation dome. There, through reinforced glass, they watch Phobos and Deimos, Mars's two tiny moons, drift across the sky. They talk about Earth, about oceans and winds, about things that no longer exist here. And then someone says softly, one day Mars will have its own oceans. The others smile because on Mars, 
every dream begins as a whisper. Farming on Mars is the beating heart of the colony. The Green Dome, a glowing oasis of life, is filled with rows of plants rooted in soil made from crushed basalt, bacteria, and composted organic waste. LED lights mimic sunlight, cycling through warm and cool tones to match Earth's rhythm. Scientists have even bred plants to grow under low pressure, learning to thrive in 38% gravity. The first flower bloomed here on Sol 142, a small white daisy, fragile yet defiant. The crew named it Hope. Food isn't just sustenance, it's psychology. Fresh leaves remind them of home, of the earth they left behind. The smell of soil, even artificial, anchors them, proof that life still belongs here. But Mars demands constant attention. Dust infiltrates every machine, freezing temperatures threaten pipes, and micrometeorites strike the domes like invisible bullets. Every system must be checked daily. A single failure, a leak, a crack, a power short could mean catastrophe. Yet every problem solved becomes a lesson for the future. The colonists record everything, every data log, every experiment, every word, because they know someday others will follow. Outside the domes, construction continues. Robotic rovers lay foundations for Colony Beta, the second settlement, to be connected by pressurized tunnels. The goal? Self-sufficiency. No more supply ships from Earth. No more waiting. Mars must provide for itself, from soil to sky. As months pass, the colonists adapt. Muscles weakened under low gravity, but they train every day on resistance machines to keep their bodies strong. Psychologists monitor their moods through journal entries and speech patterns. Some dream of blue skies. Others begin to feel something deeper, a connection to this world. They call it the Martian bond. It's not love, it's belonging. Birthdays are celebrated with dehydrated cake mix. They project fake candles on AR screens. It's strange, but it works. Laughter echoes softly through the metal halls, and for a moment, it feels like home. But one morning, alarms shatter the calm. A solar flare erupts from the sun, stronger than any in decades. Radiation levels spike across the colony. EVA's voice fills the halls. Shelter immediately. Storm approaching. Colonists rush into underground bunkers as radiation sensors flash red. For hours, they wait in darkness, listening to the faint crackle of cosmic energy. When it's over, the sky glows faintly green, a Martian aurora. It's beautiful, but deadly. Outside, solar panels are scorched, communications glitch. The colonists work for weeks to repair the damage, yet none complain. They know they just survived Mars at its fiercest. That day becomes known as the Great Flare, a reminder that nature still rules here. Months later, something extraordinary happens. Dr. Alera Mendez, the colony's biologist, reports traces of microbial activity in a frozen water core sample taken from beneath the surface. The data isn't conclusive, but it sparks global excitement. Could life still exist beneath Mars crust? The news reaches Earth, and for the first time, the word Martian means something more than a myth. Soon, new missions are planned, cargo ships, labs, and more crew. Mars is no longer a distant project, it's a living frontier. Years pass, the colony expands, children are born who will never see Earth. They learn to walk in 38% gravity, to breathe air made by machines, to play under an orange sky. Their first word isn't mama, it's Mars. These children will grow up calling two planets home, 
a generation of interplanetary humans, and when they look back at Earth through telescopes, they will see not separation, but connection, the bridge between what we were and what we've become. In the control room of Colony Alpha, a plaque is mounted on the wall. For all those who dared to leave home so that humanity could find another. And beneath it, handwritten by the first commander, we are not alone. We are everywhere. Mars Saga isn't just about discovery anymore. It's about transformation of worlds and of ourselves. Every heartbeat beneath these domes writes a new chapter in human history. And as the stars rise over the red horizon, the story of Mars continues, not as a dream, but as a dawn. Thank you for watching till the end. You were watching Mars.